Hello, it's me, Cubby. I'm here with another personal spin. This is a bit of a special one because I'm going to show you my entire CD collection. Um, I have a very large CD collection. It starts... Uh, it is around about 1,150. Uh, you'll have to excuse the man boobs. It's way too hot to wear anything at the moment. Um, so... Yeah, I'm afraid you'll have to just put up with it. Um, I am working on losing weight and doing quite well, actually. I must must uh, be honest. But anyway, must stay on subject. I have loads and loads of CDs, so this will be a multi-part video. Um, I'll do it as a playlist. There will be probably like 26 plus videos because there's, as I said, 1, 000, uh, 3,150 albums to get through and. Uh, it takes me about two hours just to do one section, so it's going to be a long video. Um, I will start with A, I've got an itchy face, and to numbers. Um, I will talk about them. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments section. Like and subscribe if you enjoy. Um, let's get started, I suppose. The music in the background is a band called Griffin. I've forgotten the name of the album. <coughs> I don't even know if you can hear it, but put it on quite quiet because I'm jamming but I'm talking at the same time. Right, let's get started. First off we have this epic jazz album by Andrew Hill called Point of Departure. It's really good. Uh, things I like about it most is it's quite avant-garde and it's styling. Um, it's quite far out there. It's not the easiest jazz album to listen to. It's part of the Rudy Van Gelder edition remixes, which means it sounds really good. Um, and it has three bonus tracks, so there's eight tracks in total. Um, and yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Let's push that over there. Next, we have Annihilator's album called Metal. Um, this one's quite good. Um, he's trying something a little bit different with this one. Uh, there's lots of like guest guitarists and things, so there's a lot more emphasis on like guitar solos and things like that, which isn't quite my thing. So it's not my favourite album, but it's definitely worth a listen. But it wouldn't be the one I'd suggest starting with. Next, we have the badly born drawn boy soundtrack by About a Boy. Um, I'm never quite sure which is the actual front cover. Um, I picked this up cheap, as you can see from the sales sign. Um, it's a good soundtrack, it always makes me giggle the film. Um, and it was cheap, so I picked it up, and that, that that's pretty much all I can say. Uh, it's a good little acoustic album. Yep. <laughs> Next we have Animals as Leaders, Weightless. This is their second album. Um, I've got to be really honest, I'm not entirely sure why I buy Animals as Leaders albums, because sort of fret wanking isn't really my sort of thing and that's basically what this is but this is a little bit more engaging than like, some others so I think that might be why um, yeah but, I mean if you like that sort of thing you could definitely do far worse than tossing Abasai I think that's how you pronounce his name um, he's pretty cool next we have this now classic album The Razor's Edge by ACDC Starting out with the now classic Thunderstruck album uh, song. There's some other good ones on here as well, like The Razor's Edge, Shot of Love, Got You by the Balls. And as with most ACDC albums, the argument goes if you've heard one, you've heard them all. But it's ACDC, you just can't go wrong with them, at least you know what you're getting. Next we have Transistor by 311. Uh, this is their most varied and longest album. Um, I'd say it's slightly too long, probably. There's 21 songs on it. Um, interestingly about this album, though, is it's stamped on the front. It says, promotional use only, no sale allowed. And yet I bought it from Amazon for about 20p. And I've also, apparently it's an HD CD. But I don't really know what that means, so perhaps someone can explain. I suppose it's supposed to mean it's got really good sound quality, but... I can't hear the difference, but then I'm partially deaf in one ear anyway, so that might be why. Next we have 
311's 311 album. Uh, I quite like this one. It's one of their earlier albums. Um, 311 are cool. They haven't dated quite so well with their rapping thing. And yeah, I really quite like them. So I'd probably say start with this album. That or this album. Chaos AD. This one's got slightly less rapping in it. Um, in fact, from my recollections, I don't think it's got any at all. But I can't remember. There's so many of their albums and I have them all, except the newest ones. I can never remember which ones are which and stuff like that. And I listen to so much music that, you know, keeping track of everything can be quite hard. I mean, I do have my favourites. But um, this one's from Chaos. It's pretty good. I quite like that one. I quite like the front cover as well. It's like a star in some sort of thingy. Next, we have this classic little album by Alien Ant Farm. Alien Ant Farm are one of those bands that sort of transcended styles without really transcending anything. Um, some people would put them in the new metal category and others would put them in the pop punk category. Um, but they didn't really fit into either of those categories in terms of genre. So, yeah, but I really like them. They're quite, quite unique. And I got this really cheap from the library, hence all the crappy library stickers. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. This is my favourite 311 album. Um, it's their shortest as well, but it's got Sunset in July on it, which is just like such a killer track, especially considering it's almost Sunset in July. Maybe I should play it. <laughs> Next up, we have Alestorm, which is a cool band. Uh, this is uh, Back Through Time, which is one of their newer albums. I think it's their like fourth or third album. Um... It's got the Sunken Norwegian on it, which is my favourite track on the album, along with Rumble Combo, because it's hilarious and it's six seconds long. Uh, the story with Alestorm is that for the longest time I couldn't differentiate between the fact that it says Ale and Storm, and I used to call them Alice Storm, which I think is hilarious. Um, yeah, good pirate metal band, or whatever you want to call them. They're, they're just metal, really, with a piratey theme. I don't know if that constitutes a whole other genre, but... I'm not going to discuss all that stuff. Next, we have All About Eve's uh, self-titled album. These guys are a female-fronted, sort of gothy, rock, folky band. Um, think Lacuna Coil and Evanescence, but from the 80s and a bit more, sort of, less metal. A bit more, less metal? A bit less metal. Um, in fact, a lot less metal, uh, but it's definitely, definitely an influence on those bands. So if you haven't picked this up, pick it up. It, it's pretty good, I like it. It's very good. Next up, we have Avenged Sevenfold to the Stage. I've only actually listened to this once, and I wasn't that impressed. Um, but I do think I should give it another listen, or three. Um, so I will give it another listen at some point. In fact, I'll add it to my to listen to pile, which I'll put down here, which is on my hard drive, which has got all my CDs ripped on it. Right, next up we have After Dusk. This album is called Hubris. Um, this is the first from many from a box set I got from a what I think was a record label on eBay. I bought something silly like 150 albums in a box for £36, which is phenomenally cheap. And they're scattered throughout my entire um, CD collection sections. And uh, many of them are really obscure, unheard of bands. Um, and a couple of them I got from a uh, car boot sale for like 25p. Um, I don't think I've ever actually listened to this one. This is the trouble with getting so many in one go. You end up sort of not listening to some of them. So that should go on my listening pile. So I can tell you all about it in a review. <coughs> Next, we have another one from that box set. From this point on, that box set will be referred to as that box set. Um, these guys are kind of a rock band. They're just a regular sort of rock band, really. They're not particularly anything special. But the songs are quite good. Um, they're called Alex and um, the album is also called that. It's got an interesting little album cover on it. If you can find it, you could do worse. Next we have Criteria for a Black Widow by Annihilator. Um, 
This one's good. They tried to recapture their like original beginning sound. I think they largely succeeded, but I think it just was at the wrong time. If they'd done that now, they'd probably be huge again. Annihilator are one of those bands that never quite have never quite got the recognition they deserve. Um, but this is a pretty good album. It's got a couple of bonus bits on it as well, which is fun. Next we have Air, Moon Safari, which I picked up from Poundland for Pound. These guys are like an electronic, dancey music thing from France. Um, yeah, it's quite good. It's different. You'll notice that I don't just collect metal, although metal is kind of the biggest chunk of my collection. Next up we have Arctician. I think that's what they're called. I've never been quite sure because I can barely read the name. And this is another one from that box set. The album is called No Resist Born Talamb. Something like that. Um, it's out and out pure death metal of the most brutal kind. In fact, it's kind of blackened death metal. It's hideous. <laughs> it's, it's good. And the same goes for this one. Only these have got a much easier to read name. Alleluia. Um, breathe your soul. Uh, they're kind of slightly thrashier in their approach to death metal. Um, also got this from that box set, along with the last one. There's a lot I got from that box set. Next we have Hero of Fake, which I only bought because there was a demo in a Between the Buried and Me album, um, and I then found out they had two albums. I bought both. One of them I didn't really like and the other I did and I can never remember which one is which. I think this is the one I liked. It's more melodic and therefore I liked it more. Um, but you could, should definitely check that out. Next up we have Annihilator's 2001 album Carnival Diablo or Diablo. Um, this is a really good one. It's a really good, really good album. It's kind of groove metal, thrash metal stuff. It's got Denied on it. Perfect Virus, Carnival Diablo, Time Bomb, Shadow Grave. It's just a really good album. Definitely worth buying. Which is then followed up by this travesty, which is um, the Fortress, or is it just Fortress by uh, Alter Bridge? Um, Alter Bridge are an interesting one because I really liked them when they first came out. And I'm not one of these people who go, oh, they've sold out to the crap now or anything like that. But I genuinely find their later albums to be piss poor, boring dirges that go on for way too long. And it started with this one. Actually, it started with the third album. They just started sort of being Alter Bridge by numbers, and there was nothing really. Everything just sort of melds into one. And then it's even worse on this one because it melds into one and it's distorted because of the loudness war thing. So it's really compressed. And it's even worse is I bought this on vinyl as well. Um. Mm. Never really. I listened to it like once and was like, what is this? Followed closely by Diva by Annie Lennox, which is one of the best sort of early 90s pop albums ever released. I love it. It's such a good album. Uh, Walking on Broken Glass blah, 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 and Cold, I think it is, are my favourite two albums on this. Um, Annie Lennox is cool. And next we have the best of all about Eve, which is cool. I'm not even sure where I got this from. I think a friend left it around my house. So that's cool. <laughs> I've said everything I need to say about all about Eve. Next we have Alan Jackson, uh, The Greatest Hits, Volume 2. This is the album that really introduced me to Alan Jackson. Uh, I bought it for very cheap, like 50p from the library, hence all the crappy stickers. It's a double disc. It's got all his best songs in it from when this was released. And it uh, introduced me to him, and I've since bought quite a number of his albums. Um, though I don't have all of them. Next we have Rock or Bust by ACDC. Uh, I quite like this album. It's solid. Um... I prefer the production on their older albums. This has got a very modern production and I don't want to sound like an old fogey or anything like that, but modern production to me feels very sterile, which works in some ways and doesn't with others. 
Um, for example, it works quite well with this new album, Three Teeth, uh, Metal War, because it's an industrial album, so it's supposed to sound quite sterile, so it works with that. But with this, it just doesn't sound organic enough. There's there's too much like processing gone into the guitars and the drum sound. But the actual songs themselves are pretty good. Probably sound really good live. And we'll just jump to this since I just showed you it. This is Meta War. This is uh, Three Teeth's new album. It came out last Friday. I'm going to do a review on this along with Eccentric's new album. Um, this is very good. It's got Marilyn Manson vibe, but more industrial. Oh, excuse me, industrial. So Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson stuck together, which isn't as far-fetched as it might seem, considering they worked together for quite a while. Um, yeah, I really, really like that album. It's definitely worth buying. Next, we have Asphyxia Exit Reality with a saw blade through an eyeball. These guys are a thrash metal band. Um, this is kind of a classic thrash metal album. It's one of those classics that is forgotten... It's not it doesn't come up in quite so many lists. Um yeah, it, it's good, you should definitely check it out. <laughs> Next we have Axe Wound Vultures. Um this is alright, it's just generic metal really by numbers. Nothing special, nothing particularly new. The songs are okay, they're quite solid. You know, but it's nothing I mean I wouldn't rush out and buy it or anything like that. Is what I'm getting at. However, next I, w I would rush out and get this. This is Architect, um, the Here and Now. I really like this. These are a metalcore band. Um, they're from England, which is pretty cool. I think they are anyway. Uh, yeah, they're quite cool. They're pretty cool. Oh, I'll put that there. Asking Alexandria's um, Stand Up and Scream. It's pretty good. Um, they're sort of a later metalcore band from 2009. So it's got a slightly sort of emo-y twinge to it. But I like it, I like it. It's not my favourite metalcore album, but it's pretty cool. Next we have 311's... What is this one called? Sound System. I quite like the album cover because it's just a giant speaker and stuff. It comes in a annoying digipack case thing, but it was really cheap. I think it was like 30p. Um, this has got Come Original on it, which is probably one of their most dated songs, if I'm really honest. Um... Sounds really old and naff now, but the message was quite good about being original and stuff. But, yeah, it's a good album. Oh, next we have a classic. Um, this is At The Gates, Slaughter The Soul. Slaughter Of The Soul, sorry. Um, this has got the bonus tracks on it, so this is not like the original release or anything, but I don't really care. It's got the album on it, and that's what counts. Uh, this is epic. Uh Swedish melodic death metal or whatever the hell it's known as. Um, it's really good. I'm trying to get your picture so that it doesn't have the background on it. Um, yeah, really good. Really worth owning. So pleased I finally bought it. As I was with this, Freight Train by Alan Jackson. This is one of his newer albums. I say newer, it came out in 2010, so it's actually almost 10 years old. Um, but it's got Hard Hat, Hammer, Hammer. Freight Train, Tail Light Blue, uh, yeah, it's just got some really good songs on it. He's just a really good songwriter. Next we have this weird album that a friend sent to me free. I'm not sure what it is, it's just really weird. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone unless they like really weird electronic music. <laughs> okay, next we have All That Remains newest album. It's kind of got released and went under the radar it came out last year um, Victim of the New Disease the release is really quick after the one that came out before this um, but it's actually better than the last one I think um, what can I say about it I mean All That Remains are one of the bigger metalcore bands they've got more and more melodic as time has gone on this one they kind of pulled it back a bit and it's more like their old sort of stuff so there's a nice mix of heavy and screamy stuff and singy stuff so that's cool next we have annihilators all for you one of their more sort of groovy heavy metal uh albums um it's 
got Doctor Psycho and Demon Dance on it though, so they're they're pretty cool song. <laughs> Next we have Autopsy's Seven Survival. Um, this is awesome. I think that's the censored cover, but I'm not sure. Uh, this is the two disc version, so it's got the actual album and it's got an entire disc of bonus tracks, which are rehearsals and stuff like that. I'm going to add this to my listening pile because I haven't listened to it for ages. I'm going to check out the demos. I think I didn't listen to them originally. Next, we have one of my favourite live albums. This is Live at the Fillmore East by the Allman Brothers. This is the double disc version. So it's got the 32 minute whipping post song on it. Um, I stupidly threw away the little plastic cover which had the track list on it. Um, I don't know why. I think it's because it just didn't fit in to the uh, into the shelving I had at the time. But it's a really good album. If you like live albums, get it. Right, next little pile. We have Avenged Sevenfold's classic album. This is my favourite album of theirs. Um, Ever since then, I think their discography has been a bit patchy. Um, it's a bit long. It's a bit too long, I think. They probably could have done with getting rid of track 9 and 10, which is the two-part thingy. I've never really enjoyed that bit. It goes on for way too long. Um, but the rest of the album's great. Um, this is the album that introduced me to them. I saw them on Scars or something like that and was like, that song's amazing, Unholy Confessions. And then I bought the album like a day later, so end of story, really. Next we have this awesome limited edition, it's even numbered. It's quite a high number though. Oh, it won't focus. Never mind, it's 1,052 of 2,000 copies um, of Set the World on Fire by Annihilator. Um, this is quite drastically different from their first two albums. It sort of jumps like a lot of bands did from sort of thrash metal, technical thrash metal, to just sort of regular heavy metal sort of stuff. But I really like it. I think it's a really solid album. One of their best. Um, sorry, this little flashy sticker took my interest because it says product original product. Um, which is good. It means I know I bought it. Ah, next we have a classic pop punk album or skate punk album or whatever it is. Oh, uh, problematic. This has got She Broke My Dick. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. It's not it. It didn't really happen. Um, but to be honest, the rest of the album just, <sighs> just pales in comparison. I can't remember any of the rest of the album because that song is just so awesome. Um, so we'll add that to my listening pile as well. So I can get to grips with it. Next we have King of the Kill, Annihilator. This is another really solid album. Especially considering they were starting to have troubles with the lineups and everything. It's got King of the Kill on it. Bliss, uh, The Box, Bad Child, Speed. It's a good one. Good album cover as well. Next we have this folk album. Um, it's weird. Um, it's got very repetitive lyrics. But they're like tone poems. Um, I'm not sure I'd recommend it to anybody to be honest though um, it's by Alela Diane and Ryan Francesconi um, it's quite good but it, it's just a bit like the songs tend to have like four lyrics and they just repeat them for like 20 million years <laughs> so I'm not really sure what's going on there Next we have Arch Enemy, Will to Power. This is their newest album. I really like it. A lot of people who are like, metal, um, just slag them off and go, oh, they're sold out because they've got a bit of melody, like singing and stuff. But I really like it. I think the riffs are solid. I think the lead guitar playing is solid. I think the vocals are solid. The bass playing is bassy and the drums are good. And the production is pretty good. You can hear all the instruments. It's not too compressed um, and that sort of thing. I think it's a really solid album. One of my favourites of whatever year it was released. I remember adding it to my favourite albums of that year. Um, next we have another 311 album, Stereolithic. Um, don't think I've really listened to this one. I think this is one of the... They've, uh, they started going a bit... You know, I mean they've always been a bit poppy. But more sort of, you know, commercial. Sort of think killers and that sort of thing on this one. Which might be why I haven't listened to it so much. So I'm going to add that to my listening pile as well. <laughs> going to have a huge listening bar by the end. Um, 
Alice Cooper, Brutal Planet. I grew up with this. I got introduced to this when I was 12. So this has been with me for a long time. I love this album. It's a classic Alice Cooper album. A lot of people slag it off because he went sort of kind of heavy with the new metal thing and stuff. But I think it's really good. Next we have Rem uh, Refresh the Demon by Annihilator. Um, this is unfortunate because I think some of the songs are okay, but you know he was having real serious trouble with lineups and things like that, and it shows. I think the whole electronic drum thing doesn't really work. It probably would with today's electronic drums, but not back then. Um, Thirty Six Crazy Fists, Time and Trauma. Um, Thirty Six Thirty Six Crazy Fists are another interesting band. I really quite like them, but. Their latest albums have all been a bit sort of samey. They sort of mesh together really well and then nothing really sticks out. And that's what Time and Trauma is like. Next we have this quite unusual, I think they're like a new metal slash industrial band called uh, Anyone. The album's called Anyone. I would describe them as an industrial sort of new metal band, but I'm not sure what anybody else would describe them as. Um, it's quite... I'd never heard of them. I just bought it because the album was interesting. And then I realised the cover had a naked lady on it. <laughs> so that was meh. But it's pretty good. It's kind of think Rob Zombie, but weirder. Like musically weirder. Uh, next we have Anti Flag. Um, the Blood and Empire. Now I know I said what I said earlier about bands that sell out and stuff. But this is one of the few times where I think a band genuinely has sold out. Because a lot of their lyrics are like, oh, don't do this to the mass corporations and stuff. And then I'm like, but you're signed to Sony BMG. So really, you're just hypocrites. Um, sort of thing. But that said, I really like A Trillion Dollars. Uh, I tell you, Bert, the press corps got great bass playing. Um, War Sucks Next Party. Which is actually a pretty good album. But I do find them a bit hypocritical when they're going on about like... Uh, corporations and wine, wine, wine and whingy, whingy, whingy about this stuff and then they sign to Sony BMG. I just find that really hypocritical. Like, you know. So, I mean, that's the definition of a sellout band who sort of slag off major corporations and then, like, assign to one. Anyway, enough of a rant. Next we have Aftermath. <coughs> Eyes of Tomorrow. These guys are pretty cool. They're like a technical thrash metal band. Um... Not sure where I got this one from, but I like that album cover. It's very cool. Uh, it's quite technical. I don't know whether to add this to my listening pile because I don't think I've, I've listened to it a few times, but I don't really remember it that well. So I think I will. Next we have Ark and Stone. This is a band from the box set. Um, they're sort of a thrashy death metal band. The thing on the front really scares me. It's like an experiment. Um, they're pretty cool. If you can find a copy, I recommend giving them a try. <laughs> Excuse me, I've now got the hiccups from nowhere. Another band from that box. These guys are a death metal band. I listened to these just the other day. Um, they're kind of groovy death metal. Um, with a pirate ship on the front. Wish the screen would stop being so reflective. Um, yeah. Nine songs of headbanging goodness. Next we have 1349, which I believe is, they're named after like the beginning of the Black Death or something like that. They're a black metal band. This is, I don't even know what the album's called because I can't read it. Oh, Revelations of the Black Flame and Works of Fire, Forces of Hell. It's got a live album and an album album. Um, I like black metal, but I'm quite fussy with it. I like the sort of more atmospheric stuff. So I don't think I've ever listened to this. I have no idea where I got it from. So, be interesting to see. Next, we have All That Remains, The Order of Things. This is one of their more sort of, you know, more commercial albums. It's just a bit more accessible. It's got the True Cult Metal song on it. I don't believe I've ever actually listened to this one. So I'm going to add that to my pile of listening stuff as well. It's probably really good. I'm a sucker for melody, just so you know. Here's the other A Hero of Fake album. Uh, I think this is the one I wasn't so keen on. It was There wasn't any singing vocals in it. It was all screaming. And at the time, that just 
didn't really cut it for me. So next we have Audio Slave's self-titled album with Cochise on it, and uh, you know it's a pretty good album, good sort of rock album. I like it. It's not my favourite thing in the world, but it's good. When you've got lots of people around who don't like the sort of heavier stuff, you can put that on and they'll go, Oh, I know this song. Uh, next we have The Greatest Hits by 311. Um, being a Greatest Hits album, it's kind of, you know, it's got their, their greatest hits on it, which means all the songs are really good, generally speaking. And, uh, yeah, I like it, so it's good. Next we have A Mono Mouth's newest album, Berserker. I really like this. A lot of people are complaining because they just sound um, the same with all the other albums. But, uh... As they've said recently, they're kind of an ACDC band. They're not going to change. You know what you're getting. As long as each album has got some good, solid songs on it, I don't think that's really a problem. Um, and they do. Um, Fafnir's Gold, which is the opening track. Great start. Raven's Flight. Ironside. Shield Wall. These are all going to be hits, like live. So that's, that's it at the end of the day. And some of the others are pretty good as well. There's not really any weak songs on it. I get what people say about it not being particularly original, but the songs are different to the next album, The Crusher, which is really heavy compared to that one, and much less um, melodic and things like that. Um, this is one of their first albums, I think. This is a... Uh, oh, no, it's not. I don't know if I've listened to this. Um, it's good, though. Because it's same on my mouth. It's going on the listening pile, I've decided. Next we have Evolver by 311. Uh, this one's their acoustic -y one. Um, I like it because it's acoustic. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say about it, really. Um, Waking with Fury by Annihilator. This one's the sort of... He wanted to concentrate more on melody. And you can tell. It's got Ultra Motion on it, which goes Ultra Motion. Um... Precious Lunatic Asylum. It's still got that sort of annihilating thrash metal thing to it, but it's definitely got a more like hard rock uh, groove going to it. I can't push these all back, so never mind. Next we have Alice in Chains' Dirt, classic album. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them, though, if I'm really honest. I know you can crucify me later. They're just not my favourite band. Simple as that. Um, although I do like Rooster and then Bones and Damn That River. Okay, so that's three so far. Um, it's, it's a good album. It's a good album. I got it because it was recommended to me. Um, I'm struggling to uh, put my CDs back. I was going to start the video by showing you how I store my CDs, but I thought that was really boring. Um, next we have three th 36 Crazy Fists classic album. Uh, it's called Snowcap Romance. It's my favourite album. Pretty much every song on it is classic. Um, can't go wrong with it, really. Again, it's like new metal. I grew up in that time period, you see. So Now we've got Atreyu, The Curse. This has got a bonus DVD on it, which I've never watched. Um, Atreyu are interesting. Um, their early albums are really, 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 really strong, like, screamy and stuff like that but his screams are quite weak i've always thought um so yeah um i actually prefer their newer stuff where he's just singing i bought their newest album the other week really cheap as well and um i really like it it's really melodic next we have all that remains classic album the fall of ideals um this is really good really melodic i think kill switch engage Lots of screaming, lots of singing, um, classic formula of the metalcore genre. Um, absolute classic. Buy it. <laughs> Literally, it's, it's their best album, I think. Next we have As I Lay Dying, Frail Worlds Collapse. These guys are cool, and yeah, I know Tim Labesis, Lambesis, whatever his name is, was done for... Whatever it was it was done for, I'm not going to get into that. I like the music, and therefore I have three of their albums. Don't care. Um, these guys are cool. They're kind of like thrash metal, metal core, but more sort of metal. They're a bit heavier than metal core, metal core. But they sort of are lumped in that 
Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. I like them. Next we have Surter Rising by M on a Math. This album has the riffs. They're really good riffs. Um, if you like riffs, get this album. It's good. Next we have the Alan Parsons Project, iRobot. I got this for the album cover and because it's called iRobot. It's got some really good bass playing, really good drumming in it. Which I it's I think is the highlight of the album, the drumming and the basing. Um the production's nice and seventies, it's got nice soft drums to it. Um but I really, really enjoy it. It's like proggy stuff. It's good. It's good. I like it. Next we have this classic by Anthrax, Among the Living. Um Anthrax are my least favourite of the big four. Um and this is the only album I own of them. Um but I do quite like it. Um, a Skeleton in the Closet and Indians are pretty good. And the opening track Among the Living. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're not bad. <laughs> Next we have Athlete, Tourist. These are a sort of indie rock pop band. Um, got it really cheap from Poundland. That's what that pink sticker means. Um, nothing special, nothing particularly bad either though. Um, they're entertaining. Next, we have hi uh, American Hi Fi with I think it's just called American Hi Fi. Um, these guys are a sort of pop punk band. Um, got this for a pound as well. It's got flavor of the week on it. Uh, they're a little bit more sort of emo y, so they're not quite the sort of pop punk that I like. I mean, pop punk was always a bit like girlfriends, this and stuff like that, but a lot of them were funny about it. Those guys weren't quite funny with it. So, next we have Airborne, who are basically the biggest rip-off band um, in history. I mean, it's basically just ACDC, but with new people in it. Um, that said, I really quite like them. Um, so much so that I've got all their albums so far. Um, this one comes with a bonus disc of a short live gig. Um, it's called Black Dog Barking. Yeah, Black Dog Barking. Um, Animalize is good. Live It Up, Firepower and Woman Like That are all good. But I mean, yeah, they won't be to everyone's taste because they are really, really similar to ACDC. Too similar, I would say. But, you know, there we go. Next we have Amen, Death Before Music. Um, I think my friend left this and that's why I have it. They're kind of a punk band. But they're not really. I, I don't really enjoy it that much. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's considered a classic, but I don't really enjoy it that much. Next, we have The Tide and Its Takers by 36 Crazy Fists. Again, it kind of just melds into one. Nothing really stands out on this one, which is a shame. Because they're a really good band, but they kind of just ended up going by the numbers, really. I got a really itchy nose for some reason. Next, we have All That Remains Madness. This is the one they released before the. Uh, last newest one so this was released really really quickly after this came out in 2017 and literally like a year later possibly less they released the other one which I forgot the name of this has got Madness on it which is a really good song um, and the rest is really quite melodic I think maybe that's why they released it so quickly they released this for a melodic one and then released the newer one for a more sort of hard sound perhaps I don't know excuse me a minute we need to find out where this went. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I had to sort it out, otherwise, I was going to ruin my video. I've got so many in A. <laughs> it's not going to fit. Next, we have Assassin with Combat Cathedral. These guys are a thrash metal band from Germany. I believe they're from Germany anyway. Um, yeah, when I got it, I wasn't all that impressed with it, but I've since really got into thrash metal, so I'm going to add it to my listening pile and digest it a bit more. Next we have another 311 album, this is called Uplifter. This one's quite scary, I think that's why it's called Uplifter. It's quite good though. Next we have, and you will know them by the Trail of the Dead, or something like that. It's a really long name for an album. Um, source tags and codes 
These guys are a weird band. I thought they were going to be really like math corey, but they're actually just kind of a regular rock band, really. Um, nothing like what I thought they would be like, anyway. Put it that way. Next section. Next we have this is Treasure Fist Business the Star. This has got slit wrist theory on it, which really stands out. Um, and Turns to Ashes is a really good one as well. Not bad. Good start. It's a shame they sort of drifted after that. I'm going to have to start putting these here now. Next we have another band from that set. Oh, this shouldn't be in this. We'll put that one there for later. <laughs> um, what remains of War You Cannot Win. This is when they started getting really political and sort of, you know, it's not quite as good as the Fall of Ideals though. Then we have All That Remains, This Darkened Heart. This is them when they were more, what's the word, uh, heavy. <laughs> There's not much melodic singing, if any, at all. Um, the, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. This is more sort of melodic death metal than metalcore. So I was a bit taken aback when I first heard it. I was like, oh. Okay, next we have Allegiance, Him Till Hunger Good. Hunger, Hunger Good. These guys are a Viking black metal band, for want of a better word. Um, it's really good. You should definitely check them out. There's the album cover again. They're called Allegiance. Um, the album is called Him Till Hunger Good. All the songs are in Swedish or Norwegian, or some Scandinavian language anyway. Pretty good. Next we have ABC's The Lexicon of Love, classic 80s synth pop album, which has got Shoot that poison arrow through my heart in it. Excuse my single. You've probably have all gone deaf now. Deaf now. Mm -hmm. Next we have Drama Rama by Agents of Mercy. Good little prog rock band. Um, I believe this has got most of the members from Flower Kings in it, but I'm not sure. Next we have Arrested Development, three years, five months and two days in the life of. It's called that because that's how long it took them to get a record deal. Um, socially Conscious Hip Hop, um, got it for a pound. I really like this. Um, hip Hop I always find quite difficult to talk about because without trying to sound whatever the word is, a lot of the lyrics I obviously find quite hard to relate to because I'm not African American or black or anything like that. That said, I like the beats and some of the lyrics I find very interesting and I'm not above learning about the issues and I know about the issues. I don't know about them personally, but you know, I've I've, I've I can learn about them. Anyway, I'm trying not to be too political or anything like that. Um, it's a good album. It's a really good album. <laughs> I hope I don't come off as being some sort of jerk now. But there we go. Um, next we have the Phantom of the Opera soundtrack. This is the soundtrack from the film with Gerard Butler in it, which I think is the best version, and I've seen the theatre version nine times, so I think I have a bit of authority and I can decide my favourite version of it. Uh, I just like the emotion he portrays in it. Next we have This Disaster. I don't even know what that says. Um, I've never even listened to it. I got it from Poundland, and the back cover was God Shuffled His Feet by Crash Test Dummies. So I was like, oh, yay, one of those albums that is really on my list. Bought it, and then I opened it, and it wasn't that out. It was this instead. Um, so I've never listened to it. Thoroughly disappointed. Um, yeah, I did eventually get that album though, just in case you're wondering. Next we have Acre Cock or Acre Coke, the Goat of Mendes, which I also bought from Poundland. And um, these guys are an English black metal, goth metal something band. Um, it's, it's pretty, I'm going to add it to my listening pile because I don't think I've ever really listened to it. Next we have Artificial Brain and it's called Infrared Horizon. These guys are a tech death, tech death metal band. Um, really good. It's, it's a concept album about the robot on the front, but I'm not entirely. I haven't quite worked out what it's actually like. What the story is? I just from what I worked out anyway, it's about that robot. It's really good. Really technical. It's fun. It's a fun listen. Which is a shame because this next one isn't plus forty four. Um, 
when your heart's beating. I no, just no. Blech. Alan Jackson, who I am, no, what I do. This has got a uh, talking song repair blues on it. Um, the rest of the album's it's okay. I mean, each song it taken as its own is quite good, but they don't really stand up over that one. And then we've got Drive by Alan Jackson, which compared to this album is far better. Both of these I got very cheap from the library and all the stickers. But out of these two, I would choose Drive, even though this has got Talking Song Repair Blues on it, which is one of my favourite songs by Alan Jackson. Um, but there you go. Can't have it all, I guess. Next, we have another album from the box set. Um, these guys are called Anthropia. I believe they're from Italy. They are a prog band or power metal band, kind of proggy power metal sort of thing. Uh, it's a concept album. I don't know if they've ever released another album because this came in that box set. Um, if they have, I want it because this is part one of the Aryan Chronicles. Uh, the Journey of Beginnings, and it's really quite good. So I'm on the lookout for it. Next we have Anthems of Rebellion by Arch Enemy. The front cover is gone. I used to sleep in a caravan in the garden because we had too many people living on our house. And um, I decided that the walls needed decorating, and at the time I was like, ooh, album covers make good posters, and cut loads of them out. So you'll see that throughout the collection. There are a few with missing covers. I could rebuy them, but to be honest, the CD still works, so I'm not going to spend, like, oodles of money just so that the front cover can exist again. Just, it's not worth it to me. This is a great album, though. Um, this is when they first sort of became big um, with We Will Rise. But it's, it's really good. Next we have Alexis on Fire, or Alex is on Fire. Um, my favourite album by them. Um, Young Cardinals, Old Crows. The other way around, even, sorry. Um, just every song on this is really catchy. Um, especially Young Cardinals and Born and Raised. I love air singing to them. Maybe one day I'll do a lip sync video, if YouTube will let me. <laughs> Next we have Artillery, The Face of Fear. This is their new album. Um... It's really good. Pain is my favourite song on the album. Um, and Dr. Evil, which is a bonus track, which is a really, really long bonus track, is also really good. Um, the Crossroads of Conspiracy is also good. Um, I recommend buying it if you like thrash metal. It's, it's modern thrash metal, so it's a bit more groovy. Next we have Aquilus with Gigrisus. I think they're French. They're a, they're a atmospheric black metal band anyway. Um... It's really good. I might add that to my listening pile. But my listening pile is getting quite big, and it's already quite big because I got a bunch of new albums the other day. So, hmm. Next we have Ash, 1977. This is a classic album in the sort of rock genre. Um, Ash are okay. Um, I think they're a bit overrated. I mean, they're nothing special, really. But they just happen to write really catchy songs, I think. Whereas this band, Angel Witch are absolutely phenomenal and should should have been maybe not quite as big as Iron Maiden they're not quite as good as Iron Maiden but they definitely should have been at least as big as Saxon um, they're heavier than Iron Maiden I'll give them that um, and they've got some really good songs Angel of Death Sweet Danger uh, Gorgon Angel, Angel Witch Atlantis and then this one has got a massive bonus disc with demos and b-side singles and stuff which unfortunately is mostly just the same songs that are on the album um a couple of times over so never really listened to the bonus disc oh and next we have a classic album alice in hell by annihilator what can i say about this that hasn't already been said millions of times um it's just great sort of early technical thrash metal and this album as well with Odin on our side or just Odin on our side no with Odin this is great <laughs> it's got so many awesome guitar leads on it and stuff like that um really 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 like it I listened to it about 20 20 million times in a row at one point because I just couldn't get enough of it and oddly enough I can't really remember all that much about it off the top of my head i bet if i listened to it i'd be like yes i remember this um and next we have the war of art the war 
is it the war of yeah the war of art by American Hedgehog and these guys are like an industrial new metal band um, again they never quite rose to the fame they probably should have um, but it's quite good slightly too long I think but it, it's a good album it's definitely worth checking out next we have Accuser Double Talk again sort of a technical thrash metal album this has got three bonus tracks on it um, covers a bit weird um, kind of freaks me out a bit I've got another one of their albums somewhere which is uh, different but yeah definitely worth checking them out Accuser quite good next we have Collisions and Castaways by 36 Crazy Fists again by this point kind of all their songs just meld into one but I'm going to add this one to the listen pile see if I can get into it a bit more then we have this classic album this one is pretty good. I mean, a lot of the songs are really catchy. Slightly overrated, perhaps, um, but they were huge when this album came out, and they played just around the road corner from me. And um, I didn't go, but my stepbrother did it at the time, and it was really good. <laughs> uh, Animals as leaders. This is their first album. Again, lots of fret twaddling and twiddly dwiddly diddly stuff. Not my thing, but I didn't know it at the time. Um, it's quite good though. Um, Next we have Good Time by Alan Jackson. This one is good, but for a country album it's way too long. It's like 74 minutes. Um, by sort of halfway through everything just starts sort of plodding and being a bit samey. Um, they probably just should have made it a 10 track album and uh, done a bit of editing. So yeah, there we go. AF AFI, The Art of Drowning. Um, I need a few more AI, F, AFI albums. Um, this one's okay. It's not my favourite though. Okay, this album is As, As Eden Burns, The Great Celestial Delusion, which came in that box set. It's a lot more melodic than it looks. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised when it came on on my MP3 player while I was riding my bike. It's really quite good. Ah, Avantasia. These guys to me sound like meatloaf. <laughs> um, I really, 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 really like it though. It's a really good album, especially considering it's 70 minutes long. A lot of albums that are 70 minutes long struggle to keep my attention because I've got a really short attention span. Um, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. We've now been going for 52 minutes and I've still got one, two, three, four, five piles to go. Um, another band from the box set of albums. It's it's okay. It's kind of just classic metal. Um, the Amity Affliction, Let the Ocean Take Me. This is good, but all the lyrics are really whiny, and so it kind of lets it down a bit. It takes it from what would, would have been like an eight-star album to like a six. Even though it's catchy whininess, it's still really whiny. It's like, oh, let the ocean take me to the end of... Um, then we've got this classic Alice Cooper album, Billion Dollar Babies, which I have on vinyl, but I ruined it when I was little because it was my mum's and I cut out all the bits that came with it and took them to school because I thought it was cool. So I felt a bit guilty and bought it on CD. Next we have Medusa by Honey Lennox. Um, this one's not quite as good as the other one. Um, it's pretty good, but I mostly know it for the first song because it goes, shooby dooby doo doo doo. Ah, like that. And me and my, me and my uh, big sister that always thought it was funny. Um, but there we go. Next we have Age of Nemesis. This is Terra Incognita. Uh, these guys are another sort of power metal uh, prog band. Um, I got this in that box set I keep mentioning, in the box set. Uh, it's pretty good. These guys are a bit heavier than the other one that I mentioned earlier. Um, Apophocryphia, whatever the hell they were called. That's a made-up word. That's pretty good. Oh, itchy nose, man. Next, we have Aerosmith, the big ones, which is a greatest hits collection. I got it for a pound. I have no Aerosmith. I thought, I need some in my collection, so I thought I'd, I'd just be safe and get the best of thingy, basically. Um, I quite like Aerosmith, but I don't know. I've always thought they were a little bit overrated. They're not... That they've got some really good songs, but I mean, other than their greatest hits, not any of their other stuff is really that well known. And uh, I need to, that's probably really sacrilegious, but I will actually be buying some more of their albums at some point because they're pretty cheap as well. So 
I can check them out and really make a decision. Next we have Four Hero Creating Patterns. These guys are like a new jazz album. Uh, it's 17 minutes long, which is a bit too long, considering it's quite samey. Um, but it's got really good bass. So, I like bass. Um, next we have The Amity Affliction. This could be Heartbreak. It should have been called This Could Have Sounded Like The Last Album, because it basically is, and it even has the same melodies in some of the songs, which is awful. Um, this band is called Axe, Living on the Edge. They're a classic sort of new wave of British heavy metal album. Um, it's quite good. I quite like it. Some of the songs are really good. Uh, the only problem is the drums are awful. Um, the snare drum sounds like a bass drum. End of. <clears throat> Atreyu's newest album, In Our Wake. It's really melodic. Really, really melodic. Like sugary, sweet melodic. But I really, really like it. And I recommend it. And you can get it for $3.99, brand new from HMV. I don't know what the equivalent is in America. Next we have Four Hero, two pages of, interp of reinterpretations. Um, it's a remix album of Jazzanova stuff. Uh, new jazz, whatever the hell it's called. Um, it's pretty good. Wasn't quite what I was expecting though. Kind of bought the wrong album. But that's a story for another time. Next up we have... My favourite album by ACDC, Let There Be Rock. Uh, it's just my favourite album. End of. <laughs> you can't really argue with my opinion, so. <laughs> Next we have Abaddon Incarnate Pessimist. This is a sickly, sickly kick ass blackened death metal album, which I got from a car boot sale for 25p. Um, it's not really my thing, it's a bit too like. <laughs> melds into a load of noise really um but there we go next we have um a tribe called quest people's instinct travels and the paths of rhythms rhythm really like this because it's got really good rhythms and i just like this kind of hip-hop it's kind of jazz inspired and i really like jazz um it's just got really good beats really good bass and it's smooth and the lyrics are good because they're socially conscious that sort of thing uh, next we have 30 Crazy Fists, Rest Inside the Flames. Uh, <clears throat> this is pretty good. They were sort of touring with Killswitch Engage and stuff like that by this one. By this one, It's more of a metal core, metal core album. More in the vein of Killswitch Engage. And I'm going to add this to my listening pile as well. Because I've only really listened to it a few times. Next we have Behind, Silence and Solitude. Which is all that remains is debut album. This is very... Very um, melodic death metal in style. Next we have Remains by Annihilator, which is probably their worst album ever. <laughs> oh, next we have this embarrassing one. But as I always say, there's there's nothing embarrassing in my CD collection. This is Anastasia, uh, Pieces of a Dream. Um, sickly, sweet pop music, which I got in a bag that my friend got from an old lady who died or something. And he was like, do you want this bag of CDs for 15 quid? And I was like, yeah. And me being me just doesn't get rid of anything once I've got it. So, you know. Alice, Alicia Keys, As I Am. This is like R&B type stuff. Quite like it. Generally, though, they they're, they're, the albums are just a bit too long. They tend to go on for like 50, uh, 70 minutes. And it's just too long. It's just too long. It's just, you know, it's just way too long. Nothing really needs to be that long it music what music it makes me sound like i don't really enjoy it but what happens is if you listen to an album obviously it's by the same band and no matter how good the band is they all their songs have got a specific sort of sound to them regardless of how varied they are um and so when you get to the sort of 50 minute mark my mind starts wandering <laughs> um Alice Cooper's Dirty Diamonds album. I actually saw him on tour with Twisted Sister in this album. Uh, it's really quite good. Um, it's very different to the uh, other two albums I've got of his. Um, but I quite like it. It's quite it's quite a fun album. Next we have Avril Lavigne's Let Go. I grew up with that. My sister had it and she played it all the time. The last good Alter Bridge album. They had some really catchy songs and they were still varied with their guitar work, so they had acoustic stuff, and yeah, 
Uh, next we have Hail to the King by Avenge Sevenfold. Um, a lot of people slag this off, but I quite like it. It's quite it's quite catchy, you know. Some of the songs are really good. The only thing that annoys me is on the Hail to the King. He opens up with that lead guitar thing, and then they just drown it out with the rhythm guitar. It's like, who the hell mixed this? They need shooting. <laughs> Next we have this At the Driving compilation. Um, At the Driving are interesting band they're quite weird um and they went on to form mars volta or at least a couple of them did next we have lanterns by 36 Fresh of us i believe this is their newest album um it's slightly better than some of the others but again everything just sort of melds into one next we have army freshman ep which i got at a show uh they're quite good they're a pop punk band um with keyboards and stuff gives them quite a unique sound in some ways. Next we have Airborne's debut album, my favourite of theirs I think. Again they're kind of just a ACDC rip off but yeah. Avishai Cohen, Cross My Palm with Silver. This is his one where he isn't a trio so they've got uh, a trumpet involved which is played by Avishai Cohen which is interesting because he plays bass on the other album I have of his. Um, I've not actually listened to this, so that's going on the listening pile. It's because I got it in a big box set of stuff and I listened to everything else and then moved on. Another Alicia Keys album. She's got a really good voice, but again, it's just way too long. Um, 15 songs, which is fine, but this, you know, I, I, I cut out about 50 minutes mark. Avenge Sevenfold, Nightmare. Um, it's quite good. Welcome to the family. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's quite good. It's not bad. It's not bad. Hi Fi Series by A. I finally got it for a pound from Starbucks. Um, great band. Again, they're a bit like Ellie and Amp Farm. They don't quite fit into the new metal and they don't quite fit into pop punk. They're a bit too heavy for actual pop punk, but they're not quite heavy enough for new metal, so they're sort of in their own little category. Which I quite like. <laughs> oh, we've got so much more to go. 311, don't tread on me. Uh, yeah, it's 311, what can I say? Nucleus Sounds by Ash. I'm not sure where this came from. Oh, it came from Poundland. I just bought it because it's Ash, and I thought, well, why not? Give it a try. It's alright, it's Ash. They're a rock band, nothing special. The same thing again. Um, Mental Funeral by Autopsy, classic death metal album. This has got a slightly sort of doomy, slower sound to it, but it is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's got some good riffs in it. Animals as Leaders. This album is called The Joy of Motion. Yeah. Again, it's more sort of noodling and stuff. It's good, but it's just 70 minutes of waffle, basically. Um, we salute you. Those about to... For those about to rock, we salute you, sorry. Easy, easy. Um, it's one of my less favourite albums, but it's still pretty good. Amon Amarth, Deceiver of the Gods. And this is called As Loki Falls and Shapeshifter and the Blood Eagle. It's pretty good. I like it. Ah, here we go. Another one where the thing ended up on the wall. This is... American Head Charge, The Feeding. This is okay. Um, not as good as their other album, though. Um, it does have loyalty on it, though. I'm dirty. I'm so dirt. Uh, dirty. Um, Annihilator. Feast. Um, this one is... Meh. It's good, it's good. Um, Annihilator are quite experimental. Well, they have been recently. I haven't got their newest album, actually. Um, they sort of, But they're quite disjointed in their experimentation. They tend to be really thrashy or really quite soft. There's nothing sort of where they join it together, which is a little bit annoying. Um, Schizo Deluxe, again, it's a good album. Like on Suicide Society, the... Uh, the I can't remember even remember which song it is, but it's it's like really heavy, then it's a lot soft, and then it's really heavy again, but on three different songs. It's quite good though, he's a really good guitarist. Um next we have Out 
I don't know how you pronounce it, so it's, it's just art. Um, this is the least metal metal album I've ever heard in my life. Um, I'm going to add it to my list, though, my listening pile, because I listened to it, and at the time I think I was so shocked, because I, th I thought it was going to be like Nightwish, and it's just not, um, that I, it just didn't really sink in. Next we have The Avenger by Eamon Amarth. This is the remastered version. Uh, it's good, it's got good liner notes and stuff. Um, I don't know this album quite so well. It's a lot heavier than some of their other ones. And then we have 311 Music. It's good, but again, like a lot of 311, it's quite dated now with this sort of rappy thing going on. Right, next we have Atheist, Unquestionable Presence. This is a really good album. Uh, it's got a DVD with it, which comes with a load of live shows. And it's also got a load of bonus tracks, includes just some drum and bass tracks. Uh, yeah, it's a classic death metal album. Next we have the Amazons, self-titled. Oh. Uh, these are guys are cool. I mean... They're... They're quite, they're quite good. They're they're an indie rock band, I guess is what they're known as. Um, Palace is my favourite song on it. It's the ending song. It's kind of a ballad. But it's also got Drunk Food Forever, which is my sister, me and my sister's gym song anthem. We play it before we start at the gym. <laughs> More animals as leaders. <laughs> Yom's Viking, which was my first Aim on a Math album. Loved it. Listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and then I bought all their other albums, except in their oldest one. <laughs> um, Autopsy, The Headless Ritual, quite like this. This is a cross between Seven Survival and Mental Funeral. Really, really like it. Would like to get their newest album. I think they've got a newest album. Asking Alexandria, um, this is their newest album. It's very melodic poppy a lot of people would say i quite like it um the only thing is they're very undecided what they want to do so it's it's a bit disjointed but it's quite good agents of mercy uh the black forest is another proc album um yeah it's okay it's not bad as in like dying um no ocean an ocean between us. Again, this is pretty good. Um, the cover scares me. <laughs> um, it's like melodic. It's a bit more melodic this one, I think. I think it's this one anyway. But again, they're a bit more sort of metal in the whole metalcore thing. Lots of lead guitars and stuff. Um, a perfect circle, Mer de Nom, which means the North Sea, I think, or something like that. Sea of the North, something like that. Um, this has got some really good sort of ballads and gothy rock on it. Um, yeah, quite like it. I listened to it a lot on the bus home from college back in the day. Mm, Accuser's other album, this is called Who Dominates Who. This is my favourite one of theirs. Um, again, this has got two bonus tracks on it. Um, I think this might be from um, Russia. But I don't really care. I don't really care about that whole... A lot of people have got a thing about Russia... I like, oh, don't buy them from there, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a proper copy. It was just bought in Russia, you know. I bought it secondhand on Amazon or whatever. If it comes from Russia, so be it, you know. As long as it works and it's a real disc, I'm not bothered. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, next, we have this little classic, which has got monster in it. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? It's just interesting. I've just seen it's on Walt Disney Records. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, it's just got the Walt Disney logo. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. Next we have Audio Breed, which is a deceptively heavy band. They're kind of like Hate Breed, only they're called Audio Breed. And then we have Arch Enemy Doomsday Machine. It's quite good. Um, I think they were trying to capitalise on their more melodic and commercial approach with that one. Um, but I, I really quite like it. Uh, I got through them quite quick, which is good because... We're cracking on for an hour and ten minutes now. Avenged Sevenfold's debut album, Sound in the Seventh Trumpet. I, it was okay. I, I prefer the album that came out before that. Um, the Terror State, Anti-Flag. This is good. It's when they were actually not hypocrites. <laughs> they still sing about corporations and stuff. But um, 
they're on fat records so they're kind of not on a big thing i threw out the uh cover that goes over the top so that was a bit annoying it's got some of my favorite songs by them like rank and file turncoat mind the G A W T, and you can kill the protest if you can't kill the protest so that's cool armored saint delirious nomad um it's armored saint they're pretty cool next we have Thelonious Monk and Art Blakey's The Jazz Messengers. This is a good little jazz album. It's got Thelonious Monk and Art Blakey. So the best piano player and the best drummer in jazz ever. Ooh, that's... Ooh, some people won't agree with me, but that's just my opinion. Then we have Amberlynn. These guys are a rock band, but they've got really catchy songs. It took me ages to buy this album and then I finally bought it. Then we have The Diary of Alicia Keys by Alicia Keys. Bought it for a pound from Poundland. It's okay, but it's just a bit long. Then we've got some more socially conscious hip hop. I think that's what they call it anyway. I'm sure, it's called socially conscious hip hop by um, a tribe called Quest. This one's The Low End Theory. Um, again, really good beats. It's jazzy. My kind of stuff, really, in the hip hop world, anyway. Although I do quite like a lot of the. Uh, like Dr. Dre stuff. Anyway, we'll get there when I get there. That's in the D section. We've got a long way to go yet. Uh, next we have Atheist's Piece of Time. This is an original, like, not remastered doodad copy or anything like that. Not even sure where I got it from. But it's good that it's, a like, a original copy. I was going to buy them all on HMV, but they were too expensive at the time. Otherwise I would have got the super duper remastered version of that as well. Then we have Agalock. The Serpent and the Sphere. Really like this. It's like doomy, black, metal-y stuff. Really like it. Then we have Artillery by Inheritance. One of my favourite thrash metal albums. Really good. This band should have been so much bigger than they actually are. Then we have Arch Enemy, Wages of Sin. This has got a little bonus disc on it, which con contains a load of covers and stuff. It's a good album. This is before Angela Gossow joined. It's pretty good. Then we have Alan Jackson's Angels and Alcohol. I really like this album. It's one of his newer ones. Uh, it's got Jim, Jack and Hank on it. Jim and Jack and Hank. Do, do, do. You can dance to that one. Um, then we have the Avert Brothers introducing. They're kind of like a country poppy band. My, my nephew bought it for me from Oxfam, which I thought was really nice. It's actually really good. I really like it. I was a bit dubious at first, but... I also like the front cover as well. Then we have Age of Taurus, who are, I think they're supposed to be a doom metal band, but they're not the sort of doom metal that I imagine doom metal to be. So it's kind of like a heavy metal slash doom metal band. Um, really good. Definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah. Colony of the Slain, it's called. Then we have this classic Aim on a Math album, Fate of the Nords. It's got Pursuit of Vikings on it. Need I say name more? Then we have Akon's, is it called Freedom? Yeah, Freedom, classic sort of hip hop pop album. I don't really know what kind of music it is, but one step to the family freedom. Then we have another album from Poundland by Athlete, Vehicles and Animals. Again, sort of electronic, pop rocky, indie rocky type stuff. It's pretty good. Art Architect's newest album, Holy Hell. This is one hell of an album. It's really good. Everyone should own it. It's really... It, it's it's intense. Really intense. Oh, I've got loads more to go. Um, Avenged Sevenfold's self-titled album. Quite like it. They try some new things. They do some acoustic bits and pieces. Um, there's less twiddly-widdly like on City of Evil. But it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Next we have Arza Kel. These are a prog band. Proggy, folky band. They're quite rare, I believe. Um, yeah, the album is called Arza Kel as well. It's good. At the Drive In, Relationship of Command is a really good album. You should definitely check it out. Then we have the classic Highway to Hell album by ACDC. It's probably my second favourite album, to be fair. I mean, it's ACDC. Um, Three Doors Down, Away from the Sun. Um, not a huge fan of this band, but I quite like them. They're, they're quite good to sing along to, but 
Yeah, all right. Uh, this I got from a charity shop, but I think what they've done is they've printed the cover because they lost it or broke it or whatever, so it looks a bit naff. It's like a collection of B-sides and stuff. I thought it'd be interesting. Yeah, it's all right. Next we have Ale Storm's newest album, No Grave But The Sea. I literally only bought it for Fucked With An Anchor because that song is hilarious. <laughs> Next we have Arch Enemy's Burning Bridges. This is a really good one. It's somewhat short. I think it's only like 30 minutes long. Um, but it's definitely worth checking out for early Arch Enemy. Melodic death metal type stuff. Definitely, definitely worth checking that one out. Then we have Angels and Airways. We don't need to whisper. Now, of the two Blink-182 members who split up and made uh, solo albums, I think Angels and Airwaves are slightly better, but they're both really sort of emo-y and whiny and bleh. So I don't know why I bought it. I think it's because it was cheap. Then we have the Allman Brothers, Eat a Peach. This is a great album. A classic album that everybody should own. And it contains the 33-minute Mountain Jam song. Which is reason enough to own it. That I might even add that to my listening pile. Then we have Suicide Notes and Butterfly Kisses by Atreo. This is really like screamy and oh, almost put me off the band. It's really not my thing. Not enough singing and stuff in it. Um, Adema, Unstable. These guys are basically a corn ripoff. Um, they're okay, but they just basically trying to sound like corn act of defiance birth and the burial these guys are really cool um they contain like half of shadows fall i think if my brain serves me correctly uh definitely worth checking out i recommend it uh you should buy it that's act of defiance then we have one day remains by alter bridge the best alter bridge album the one where they were really fresh and new and different even though they were basically just Creed without Scott Stapp, but Miles Kennedy really, 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 really added something good to the sound of them. So yeah, oh, we're nearly at the end, people. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next we have As I Lay Dying, Shadows Are Security. This is a pretty good album. Um, again, it's a little bit more melodic than the other one I've got. Then we have Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, Moaning. This has got the song Moaning on it, which is really good. Um, this is another Rudy Van Gelder editions one. Um, He's really good at remixing albums. These sound really good. Um, we've got Lee Morgan on trumpet, actually, which is really good as well. But I don't really know the other three people. It's a good jazz album there. Next we have Arch Enemy, Rise of the Tyrant. Um... This is a good album, the songs are good, but the production is awful. Um, okay. Um, yeah. The guitars just drown everything out, the drums disappear way too often. Agony, the first defiance. Check out that hair, man. That hair is awesome. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see that. It's a good album. It's a good album. Next we have Annihilator by Annihilator. Um, actually, is this the one with all the guitar thingies on it? I don't know. But, yeah. I don't really know that period of Annihilator very well. I sort of just... Yeah. They were good, but it was a bit generic by that point. Next we have 311 Live. This is also on HD CD, apparently. It says it just... Just there. No, I forgot it doesn't focus. Well, it says HDCD. Next we have this signed um, Army of Freshmen album. I saw them live with Bowling for Soup and the friend I went with actually bought the albums. So I'm not sure how I actually ended up with them. I probably owe her some money. <laughs> Next we have 311 Grassroots. Uh, this has got Homebrew and Omar Ha Styley on it. Again, they've dated quite badly because of their Omaha style style of wording things. Then we have this classic Back in Black album by ACDC, which has got Shook Me All Night Long, Back in Black and Hell's Bells, Shoot the Thrill. 
you know, the classics. Good. Next we have A Life Once Lost. Um, the album's called Hunter. It's pretty good. I picked it up really cheap. Um, actually contains Randy Blythe on it. Randy Blythe is on at least one song, possibly two. Oh, my nose is itchy again. Blah. Then we have Aventasia's newest album, Moon Glow. This one's really cool. It's more sort of less like meatloaf, more like power metal. Then we have ADX. This is a French or possibly Canadian um, thrash metal band. The album is called Supermati. Um, most of the songs are in French. I will not try and pronounce them because I don't speak French except Notre Dame de Paris. Victim. Anyway, I won't because it's embarrassing. Next we have At War, Retaliatory Strike. Um, they're okay. They're not as good as I thought they were going to be based on the album cover. But it's, it's okay. It's thrash metal. Uh, next we have Free All Angels by Ash. Why I have so much Ash, I don't know because I'm not even like a huge fan of them. But their albums are just so cheap. And Every album's got at least two or three songs that I really like. Next we have an album that shouldn't even be in this bit, so we're going to get rid of it and put it up there. Show you when it gets to that section. Um, Annihilator, Never Never Land. This is their second album. It's pretty good. Not as good as the first, though. Um, although it does have uh, Fun Palace on it, which is cool. Next we have Four Foot Fingers, who are a punk, scary punk band. From Britain, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, nothing special, nothing particularly great. Um, Die for the government, anti flag. Again, they're cool, they're alright, they're a bit. I don't know, there's, there's something about anti flag that just seems really disingenuine, and yet I really like them and have at least three of their albums. AFI, very proud of you. I got this really cheap as well. I'm not sure where from, but I got it really cheap. Again, I, I need some more of their sort of... Some of their other albums. I'm struggling to pick these up now. There we go. Um, Old Bridge 3. This is the one that turned me off them. They started just releasing like really long albums with loads of generic guitar work and nothing really that interesting. I might add it to my listening pile and listen to it again, see if I can change my opinion. Then we have No Guts, No Glory by Airborne. Again, ACDC ripoff band, I suppose. Well, you know, they're okay. But Then we have this, probably my favourite album by Amon Amar. It's called Twilight of the Thunder God, and it contains Guardians of Asgard, among other excellent, excellent songs. Power Ridge by ACDC. Um, it's got down payment blues and riffraff on it. I mean, it's ACDC. Avashai Cohen Trio. This is cool. Um, it's a trio, so it's drums, piano and bass. Avashai Cohen plays bass, and it's very bass-driven. And I love it. I love bassy, bassy jazz music. All Guns Blazing are sort of a thrash metal band from Britain. This is from that box set. They're pretty cool. Kind of more metalcore, actually, I think. Forearm are a thrash metal band from the box set, the box set. They're pretty cool. Though the front man looks like Matt Tuck from Bullet for My Valentine. Maybe he was just trying to be a bit more thingy. This album, uh, is it called City of Evil? Yeah, I have on vinyl as well. I quite like it. There's nothing wrong with it. They were going for a more sort of lead guitar orientated sort of thing, like classic heavy metal. But I think. They got a bit carried away and they made the album a bit too long. Again, it's like 76 minutes long and by sort of halfway through, maybe a bit longer, you're a bit fed up of the type guitar work and it just gets a bit monotonous. Or well, it does for me anyway. It makes me sound like I don't enjoy that kind of music, but I do. I just don't like loads of it. By, by like 50 minutes, I just want to try and put something else on. Um, which to me is why it's too long. Anyway, that's just me and my really bad short attention span. Next we have, I'm just going to fondle my man boobs, Alexis on Fire, Watch Out. This is from their more sort of heavy, hardcore, screamo type period. It's really good. Um, it's not the album I thought it was when I was buying it. 
and I actually need the others. Um, it's also slightly broken, not the disc, but the case, so it doesn't hold the disc properly, which is really annoying because one day it's going to fall on the floor and get scratched and not work, which will really piss me off. And last but not least, we have Andrew Cronshaw, which I got from the library. It's Zither Music. It's quite interesting, if you like Zither Music. Um, Alanis Morissette, which I got from Poundland. Um, she's a moaning cow, as that hilarious Ed Byrne says. Airborne, breaking out of hell. My mum likes this one, so that's cool. Um, yeah. His voice is a bit annoying on that one, actually. I thought it was really grainy and grating. Then we have Ashes of Aries. I really like this band. They're sort of a power slash heavy metal band. Then we have Abaddon, Sentence of Death. These guys are a sort of a thrash metal, death metal, metal metal, groove metal band. They're from that box set. The box set. And then last but not least, we have Pentos by Ageless Oblivion. These guys are a ridiculously heavy uh, death metal band that uh, just melted my head away. So I'm going to add it to my listening pile. Right. Sorry I spoke a bit fast. Um, I am aware that I was doing that. It's because I needed to get through them all because I've got so many. Um, thank you for watching. This has been the A section and the numbers of my CD collection. I have been Cubby. This has been a personal spin. If you like what you saw, please subscribe for album reviews and other random things, including random cycling. Um, I will endeavour to do section B tomorrow, but it might be the day after or the day after or the day after. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Please leave your comments, suggestions for new albums that I need to get from bands beginning with A or have a number at the beginning in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. Goodbye. I have been Cubby with a P.